Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about JavaScript in our JavaScript Functions 101 series. And if you've been following along, we know that we're using this series to determine why we use functions and what functions look like. That was the previous screencast. And I compared and contrasted function declarations to function expressions, to arrow functions, to functions stored as object method, functions that serve in the value area for an object property. And then we call that property a method. We went over that in the previous screencast, and I was really trying to use the same statements in each of the four different ways to create functions so I could prove to you that these are four different ways to create a function. But when I got done with the lesson, I was looking at the code and saying, wow, that could really be refactored, that could really be improved, because there's so much redundancy between these statements. So when we get into our next big lesson about Functions 101, when do you run functions, I'm going to go with a completely different function example. So before I do that, though, I thought, let's do some refactoring here. Let's improve this code a little bit so that people don't think that this would be the way to create code other than to demonstrate four different ways to create functions. I'm looking at these statements, and I'm seeing a ton of redundancy in the document.elementById statements. And so those can definitely be shortened if we had a global variable that pointed to that Y paragraph. And we know our Y paragraph is this first H2. Why do we use functions in the first place? So let's create a global variable here. I'm going to use the const keyword because anytime we point to something that's hard coded on the web page, it's a constant. We do not need to use the let keyword. It'd be better to use the const keyword so that, that constant cannot be changed by the JavaScript because it shouldn't be changed. So I'm going to call this const y, and I'm going to assign it to document .get element by id y. And as soon as I declare a variable, I'm a big fan of console logging it out to make sure that what I think I have in that variable, actually constant, is exactly what I have. I'm going to save and refresh. And yes, I've got that h2 element, why do we use functions, in the y constant now. And so at this point in time, I could replace all of the document.getElement by id y statements with the constant name of y. And that would shorten my code quite a bit. And as soon as I do that, I think I'm going to indent my statements here a couple faces for readability. But I can even do one better than that because I'm always going after the style property of the y object. And so let's back that on and go up to the style property, save, refresh, save, refresh. And now I'm getting returned an object that has all of the styles in that H2 element. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see the color. These are all the CSS properties that you can change in your style sheet. You know, one of my favorites is just color. If there is no assignment, then we're going to use the default color of the browser, which is black and then font size. And you'll notice that all of these property names in JavaScript match their CSS counterpart property names, only CSS uses the word underscore word syntax, whereas JavaScript always uses the camel casing so that a multi-word property has its second and subsequent words uh, capitalized. It doesn't use that underscore syntax that CSS uses. So font underscore size in CSS would be font, capital S, size in JavaScript, and so on and so forth. So I can even replace the style dot with the Y, and I'm going to do that throughout the rest of my code. Save, refresh. I'm going to try big red just for fun, and it worked. Comment out my console log Y because I'm sure now of what that is returning. Another thing you might have noticed is that I have this Y dot font size be 3Ms in each of my functions. So in each case, I'm changing the font size to 3M. Is there a way to refactor that so that I'm not repeating that whole statement every time? Well, yes, there is. Even just one statement can be put in a function, and I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it uh, M3 because we cannot start function or variable names with a number in JavaScript. And I'm just going to copy and paste that one statement. Now, this could be one statement. It could be 100 statements. But in this case, it's only one statement in this 3M function. 
And what this allows me to do then is to replace that statement in each one of these functions with merely running this new function. Save, refresh, let's try colors.bigmagenta, and it's still running. This is called composing functions. When I create a function and I run another function inside of it, by pulling out every repetitive piece of code into its own function, whether that's a one statement or 10 statement function, easier to debug, easier to maintain. So this is a very common technique. Some people even say smaller functions, the shorter your functions are, the better, because you've broken the problem down into these little bite-sized pieces and you're reusing code in multiple places. As far as maintainability, if someone decided, no, we don't want 3M, we want 3.5M, in this case, now that we've broken this piece down into its own little function, all we'd have to do is modify that one statement, and then every place where the M3 function was running would now update to that new size. So modifications and maintenance of breaking your functions down into small bite-sized pieces and then reusing that function make maintenance enormously more productive. And then yet someone else might say, well, every time we run a function, we don't want to make it 3Ms, and we want to choose the color. How might we do that? Let's write one more new function where we pass in the values that we want or the size and the color each time we run the function. What would that look like? So for our final hurrah for changing size and the color of the Y element, we're going to create a function called change size and color. We're going to pass in the size. We're going to pass in the color every time we run the function. And then we're going to go back to that same H2 and set its font size property, whatever we passed in as the size. And we're going to set its color property as whatever we passed in as the color. And let's see how that would run. Change size, color. We have to Pass in a size, let's go with 5M, something really big. And then we also have to pass in a color variable. Let's pass in red, my favorite color, F00. And let's save and run that code. And there we go. We've run that particular function, change size color, by passing in 5M for the size. So my H2 font size becomes 5M. And we've passed in F00 for the color. So my h2.color property becomes f00 red. This is a function where we've defined parameters on the front end so that when we run it, we give those parameters arguments as we run. This can make our function extremely flexible because we can pass in new values each time we run it. Let's run it one more time with two more variables. Let's see, F0, F, I think that's magenta. There we go. And now it's two M's tall with a magenta color. This is the last time you're going to see this little size color function examples. I thought it worked fine for explaining why we use functions and what functions look like. We've had a little side fun here, refactoring our functions and composing our functions. But when we get into when we run functions, we're going to talk about testing them, using them on a system event, such as a page loading, and running them on a user event, such as when a user clicks a page or scrolls on the page. I'm going to work with a little bit more sophisticated functions at that point in time, but I thought these little simple functions were fun to start out with. Let's run our little change size color one more time before we leave this fun little exercise, because that will be the first thing in our next YouTube, when do you run functions? And one of the reasons we run functions is simply to test them, and the console works great for that. So let's do it one more time. And we've got our 6M blue styles applied to that H2. Thank you.